Hello my friends and welcome back to the rabbit hole and welcome to my best skincare of 2022 series. Yes, series, what I've decided to do for our best skin curve 2022 is to use the same categories that I use in the What's New in Skincare series. So we'll have an affordable video, we'll have a Korean skincare video, and we will have one for high-end products as well. And indeed, today's video is going to be on the affordable options. Timestamps and links to everything I discuss in the description box below. For those of you who are impatient and hate intros, you can use that as well. But I do want to make sure I give you a little bit of an intro for today's video. There's some things I, I want to make sure I say. First of all, if you are new, hello and welcome. My name is Alice. Today, I am Aliceception. Anyway, my skin type is dry and acne prone, and no doubt that does have a bit of an influence on my favorite products. I'm trying to be unbiased, but you know it factors in somehow. As this video is our affordable skincare video, I want you to know that my, my focus here is trying to make this more drugstore. There actually are some Korean skincare products in this video because they too are readily available at US drugstores. And I use the Ulta website to determine whether something is a drugstore or not. You know how you have the, the $3.50 off coupon? If that applied to a Korean skincare brand, then I'm calling them drugstore. <laughs> Sadly, that means no Kosarex, but it actually does mean I do care. I really don't think I understand what makes something prestige or not at Ulta, because good molecules in the ordinary are not... Uh, products you can, brands you can use coupons on. It doesn't make any sense. Anyway, I'm trying. I also have seen all of your requests to make sure that this series isn't just, you know, the best new skincare of 2022. I'm really gonna try to make this the best skincare of all time up to 2022. Yeah, yeah. I know you all know that I put an excessive amount of thought into these videos, so what I've been doing is I kind of have these trays of skincare that I've had out for the past couple of months to determine whether something truly, truly belongs as the best product of 2022. My three winning categories for drugstore skincare are cleanser, moisturizer, and acne care. She's nothing if not consistent. I've said that many times on this channel. So the way I see it, we're gonna go ahead and start out with my favorite categories from each video, which means for this video, we're starting with cleanser. I kid you all not, if you said, Alice, you are forced to use absolutely nothing but drugstore cleansers for the rest of your life, my response to that would be, oh, that's neat, that's, I like this. <laughs> And so I do certainly have a lot here. Let's start with what I think is everybody's favorite category, the best drugstore gel cleanser, and that is going to be the Good Molecules Rose Water Daily Cleansing Gel. I have talked about this a lot on this channel. Now this truly isn't my absolute favorite category, but if this is a category that you love, I think you will be so happy with this cleanser. It is $12, super affordable. It is non-stripping. It's so gentle on your skin. It does have a very, very faint rose smell to it, but as somebody who typically doesn't like the smell of rose, I'm okay with that. So that speaks volumes to me. <laughs> I love everything about this. I love the Good Molecules brand. I love that it is in nice glass packaging with a nice pump. It is a wonderful cleanser. Note that it's not gonna be a foaming cleanser. I think a lot of people like that. I do have a foaming cleanser in this section, but overall just as a gentle daily cleanser, and remember the most important part of cleanser is simply cleansing your skin. It is so wonderful. As for cream cleanser, which is a category that I quite like as somebody with dry skin, I am of course going to say the Versed Gentle Cycle Milky Cleanser. This is a beautiful creamy cleanser. It's kind of a little on the lighter side compared to some cream cleansers that I've tried, but oh, it's so soothing if you have dry skin and you want something that is just extra gentle. Of course, no foaming to this whatsoever. Feels like a moisturizer to apply it, but it rinses off beautifully. Does Of, of course, it doesn't leave your skin stripped. A cream cleanser really never should. It's just that I feel like some can be a little bit too greasy. This is a perfect balance. It is fragrance free. It has some oat ingredients and this one is pretty easy to find at drugstores versus at Target. And then an exfoliating cleanser. Now these can be either physical or chemical. I will have a physical cleanser here, physical exfoliating cleanser, but don't worry, it's not St. Ives. No, instead it is the Rosen Super Smoothie Cleanser. This is one that 
I've talked about a lot on this channel. A lot of what you're gonna see in this video, I've talked about a lot. And that is exactly why they are in my favorites video. So this is an exfoliating cleanser, but it is so gentle. It's made with fruit seeds instead of something like walnut shells, you know, the kind of really harsh exfoliating cleansers. This one is so fun to use. It smells like a smoothie, very fitting for its name. It's just gorgeous and it's gentle. I'm buffing this into my skin really well so I can hopefully show you yeah, you can kind of see the fruit seeds, but yeah, really, really gentle, super cute little brand that focuses on acne. So this product is actually made to help with fading acne scars. You can kind of see some of the exfoliating bits to it there. It is, it is such a beautiful product, so underrated. True foaming cleanser next, I have chosen the Sweet Chef Carrot, Ginger, and Salicylic Acid Pore Cleanser. Now I've talked a lot about how I feel like there's two categories of foaming cleansers. This is that category that does this. I think that sound effect can be optional, but you can feel free to make that sound every time you pump out one of these. They're really fun to use. I mean, look at that. It's beautiful to work with, and it kind of uh, buffs into your skin and loses some of the foaminess. Now, this one is made with salicylic acid, which you often see as an ingredient for acne-prone skin, but I'm not sure what the percentage is. Sweet Chef doesn't disclose that. It might be a little lower, and hence that's why they're calling it a pore cleanser instead of an acne cleanser. Anyway, it's beautiful, it's fun to use, and it's affordable. Powder cleanser, and this one is where I do have an exfoliating but chemical exfoliating cleanser. This is what I was talking about with how we'll have some Korean skincare in this video, but it's also very easy to find at drugstores. This one is the Tony Moly I'm Rice Exfoliating Enzyme Cleanser. Enzymes give you very gentle exfoliation, more gentle than your AHA, BHA type of ingredients, and it is a powder that you will add some water to. I didn't bring any water in here, but I'm gonna borrow some of an upcoming product just so we can mix this together. So you can see it's actually just foaming up, but yeah, you have enzymatic exfoliation going on here. My favorite cleansing balm, we are going with the Good Molecules Instant Cleansing Balm. This one, it does everything you need it to. It is basically the perfect dupe for something like the Clinique uh, Take the Day Off Balm. It is just your basic cleansing balm, no added fragrance, nothing tricky going on with this, and yet it works. It removes every bit of makeup, it removes every bit of sunscreen, and it travels well. That is my main reason for continuing to stock the mini sizes of this. You know, it's not quite as good of a price per ounce as the full size, but these travel really well. Some of the higher end options that I love are beautiful and really fun to work with, but they don't travel that well. This one does, and again, I think it might just be because it kind of is a little bit more of a basic cleansing balm. Two, well, sort of three more cleansers, so I'm not gonna swatch these next two, but my best makeup remover is going to be the Neutrogena Oil-Free Eye Makeup Remover. This is a bi-phase makeup remover that I've talked a lot about on this channel. Should I just stop saying that? I, I should stop saying that. But yeah, two distinct phases. You shake it up, you pour some onto a cotton pad or a reusable round, and you just use it to dissolve your eye or lip makeup. Removes even waterproof mascara, that is true. It is absolutely wonderful for any of those really hard to remove mascaras, eyeliners, eyeshadow. This is so good. It's second only to Lancome's Bifacile, which I will tell you is a little better, but it's a big difference in price. And then for micellar water, I am gonna go with the Bioderma. I don't have this one at the moment. I will put a picture up on the screen. I do have the Garnier. The reason that I've decided not to choose the Garnier and to choose the Bioderma instead is because I've seen a lot of people express that uh, they've had more irritation with Garnier than with Bioderma. It just seems to get along with people's skin better. Uh, that said, I don't have it because the Garnier does work for me. And as some of you know, to this day, I don't always wash my face twice a day. Sometimes I do use a micellar water or a cleansing treatment instead. Acne care. This one is such an important category to me personally. Oh my goodness, I have had such bad acne through my life and my answers to clearing up my skin were at the drugstore. In a big contrast to our giant cleanser section, I actually only have three products to share with you here. These three products are, uh, they're my game changers. They've been incredible. They have been uh, the, the 
biggest part in helping me clear up my skin. So first up, and I am so sorry, this video, I promised you it's not just cleansers, but you know I have to talk about my number one acne fighting cleanser, and that is none other than the CeraVe Acne Foaming Cream Cleanser with 4% benzoyl peroxide. This is such a game-changing product for acne. Benzoyl peroxide, see, I have dry skin with acne. That's really challenging. And so benzoyl peroxide as a leave-on is, it's basically one of the worst things you can ever imagine. It is so drying, it is so irritating, and yet, if you take that same ingredient and you put it into a cleanser, it's not making contact with my skin for a long enough period of time to irritate it, and yet it is enough contact to help reduce my acne. I have purchased so many bottles of this since I tried it. It is just so wonderful to use. Definitely not quite as creamy as my favorite cream cleansers. I often forget that it technically is called a cream cleanser, but yeah, it's just kind of more of a just gentle cleanser that really helps me fight acne. Next up, and I know some of you know this is coming, I know you know it, the La Roche-Posay Effaclar Adapalene Gel 0.1%. Nothing has changed my skin as much as this ever. We have tried so many high-end products on this channel. We have tried some expensive routines, some expensive devices. At the end of the day, in terms of acne in particular, nothing has been as effective as this. It's not the easiest product in the world to use. I'm not going to pretend that it is, but it's worth it. It's worth it. I will link you my video on my six month update of this if you're interested. I need this in my life in a way that I can't say that about kind of anything other than these two products, I think. Maybe my LED masks. I do really love those. But in general, I feel like so many products in my routine, I can take it or leave it, switch it in and out. And yet, because I have acne and acne hurts, it hurts my self-esteem. I don't want to have bad breakouts anymore and nothing has ever worked as well as this. Let me make sure to say Adapalene is a retinoid. I don't have any other retinoid or retinol products in this video because I, I did end up on that team of, no, this is the best retinoid. I'm trying to fight that because I know that, you know, nothing ever works for everybody, but gosh, it's been so life-changing for me. Oh, I didn't even say game-changing. I just said life-changing, but I meant it. <laughs> I, I meant it. And one more product here, our spot treatment, Peach Slices Deep Blemish Micro Darts. These are the uh, hydrocolloids that actually have these micro-needling, dissolvable micro-needles in them. It is extremely effective. Oh gosh, I remember when I was younger and didn't know better, you know, I used to pop pimples, the, the whole nine yards, right? To know that these are now something you can walk into a drugstore and purchase and they work so well without irritating your skin, without causing pain, they don't hurt. If you are just getting into skincare, if you are, you know, if you've just started dealing with acne, you, I'm, I'm sorry, I know how awful acne is, but you are, also in such a fortunate time in terms of the options that are available to you. And my third and final favorite drugstore skincare category is moisturizer. Now for this category, I've decided to keep it a little more simple. We're just gonna do lightweight, medium weight, and heavyweight moisturizer, which meant this ended up being one of the hardest categories for me. I actually still have the Versed Dew Point out here that I wanted to show you as my favorite light moisturizer, but I think I'm actually gonna go ahead and call this one a tie. <laughs> it's three products, no, it's four products. I can't make my mind up. This one is just so beautiful. It's so elegant to work it into your skin. That was a lot of moisturizer that I applied to my hand, and you can just see it's just disappearing. This is really one of those products that is for people that don't like the feel of moisturizer, and I can confirm that because that is my very own sweetie, and she likes this one. Just sinks into your skin, and it just does not leave behind any feeling. It is gorgeous. But there is one other moisturizer that ties, and that is the Aveeno calming moisturizer. Wait, y'all, because I don't have the packaging in front of me. I gotta look this up and make sure I'm actually saying the name of this correctly. I finished mine off. I was so surprised because I have dry skin. I don't typically love this category, but Aveeno did such a good job on this. Here we go, Calm and Restore Oat Gel Moisturizer. It is really nice, especially if your skin is prone to irritation. That oat ingredient is so calming. The uh, way it feels on your skin is very lightweight. 
I think the bottom line with that one is it's so well done that somebody with dry skin could still appreciate it. You know what I mean? Medium weight moisturizer, this one was also incredibly hard, but in the end, I've got to be really predictable. It's still the e.l.f. Happy Hydration Cream. I prefer this one slightly over the Holy Hydration Cream, but they're both beautiful. Can you see that I'm almost out of this again? I think we have enough in here for me to swatch, I think. All right, so yeah, this one I would call a true medium weight moisturizer. It's gonna take a little bit longer to buff into your skin, but it's one of those where I think if you have dry skin, it's gonna be great for you. If you have oily skin, it could be your winter or your night moisturizer. The ingredients are beautiful. Happy Hydration is also fragrance free. If you are somebody who likes fragrance, I don't judge that at all. There is a holy hydration that is available with scent. And then my heavyweight favorite, probably not a surprise too, if you saw my best thick moisturizers. It is indeed the Cicoplast from La Roche-Posay, which you all say will be reformulated soon, but it looks like the reformulation is just going to be even better. This one is thick. Make no mistake of it. It is extremely thick. This is a product I really, I don't think you could wear it as a daytime moisturizer. Maybe somebody can, but it's really heavy. However, it is also really healing. Quick bonus that will appear in this video in two spots, Aquaphor. Aquaphor is a thick ointment, but sometimes your skin needs a lot of repair. You may have heard of the idea of slugging. Oh, slugging is so incredible for when your skin is irritated. Nothing beats Aquaphor to me. There is the CeraVe healing ointment is also pretty good, but I just find myself returning to Aquaphor. We're going back up to the top to talk about my favorite drugstore toners. And first category will be my favorite brightening toner. I am once again going to throw this back to the Good Molecules Niacinamide Brightening Toner. I loved this so much when it first released. And the thing is, I still like it. I still think it's a good option that is gentle overall, will work for most people. It contains niacinamide, which, you know, the thing for me with niacinamide is I think there are ingredients that I like more than niacinamide, active ingredients in particular, but I've always noticed that uh, it seems if you have a more oily skin type, you might really love niacinamide. That's what I've noticed. The people who love niacinamide seem to have oily skin. I like it. I like it. I feel like sometimes we see a little bit too much of it, so I think that that's the main reason why this has moved to a miniature size for me. But I still like it, you know? I still like it after all these years. So it does have a little bit of a more viscous texture. That wasn't a very good example, but it's a little bit thicker than water. Now, this is a, a newer product. Some of you may have already seen it in what I just did there. So my favorite hydrating toner. This one just kind of shot to the top for me. I cannot believe how good this toner is. It is again from CeraVe, the hydrating toner. I just feel like we don't see a lot of these toners that contain ceramides. I, I, I don't see a lot of them, especially in this form where it's again a little bit thicker than water, but overall still more watery. It's CeraVe, it's fragrance free, it's gonna work for just about everybody. I feel like the biggest catch with that one is it's, it's a CeraVe product so it can be hard to find it on the shelves. Sometimes I feel, I, I go into CVS and I look at the CeraVe section and the only thing on the shelves is my holy grail cleanser. Now I gotta play the wait for it to be in stock game because I fell in love with a popular CeraVe product. <sighs> And one more toner, our exfoliating drugstore toner. For that, I'm going with the Peach Slices Acne Exfoliating Toner. Now, you may have heard that this is a dupe for the Paula's Choice. I think, honestly, I like it more than Paula's Choice. I always feel surprised by the popularity of the 2% BHA from Paula's Choice. This also has 2% salicylic acid. I always feel surprised that's so popular because it feels kind of funny on my skin. I don't know if that's just a me problem, maybe it is. Comment below if you know what I'm talking about, but this one doesn't have that uh, kind of oily feeling. This is just, it feels like a regular watery toner. And yet you are getting that 2% salicylic acid. This is an incredible toner. It's, it's incredible. I cannot believe it's as inexpensive as it is. And then I do have a couple of mists for today's video, and I've got to throw it all the way back for my favorite milky mist. The Pixie Hydrating Milky Mist. This one is, 
a, a long time favorite. And it's one of these where every time I revisit it, I realize I still really like this product. I do have to tell you, you know, most of my picks in this video are fragrance free. This one is not, so make sure you check the ingredients list. I'm kind of sad that Pixie sort of dipped their toes into the world of fragrance free, and it seems like it didn't really stick for them. Their clarifying line is fragrance free. You know, again, some people like fragrance. It's fine if it works for you. I'm not going to judge. I think that's great. Um, but yeah, this is, it's beautiful. Hyaluronic acid and oat. Again, if it works for you, it might even be calming. Yeah, I, I really like this one. I feel like overall, Pixie is a brand that I've pretty much forgotten about, but I still like this mist and the glow mist, actually. One more mist to talk about. I have this listed as my favorite toning mist, but it is kind of so much more. And that is a product I don't currently have. It is the Physician's Formula, The Essence of Healthy. I called this an SK2 dupe and I stand by that. I am so frustrated with Physician's Formula for not realizing how good of a product they have. Anyway, let me tell you a little more about this. It is a, a mist, it is a spray format that contains Galactomyces ferment filtrate, which is the main ingredient in SK2. Now again, that's a genus, so it's a little more complicated than just saying, oh, it's a perfect dupe, uh, but it's a really good product. It has a very strong smell of that yeast ferment filtrate, so note that, you may not love the smell. I didn't love the smell, but I loved the results and it's so inexpensive. I will never understand Physicians Formula as a brand. I feel like they've come out with a few hits over the years and they discontinue them or they make them hard to find. I, I don't, I don't get it. It's, it's so good though. Now for serums, this is one of my absolute favorite categories and I do have a few absolute favorites from the drugstore. So let's start with my favorite smoothing serum. It is none other than The Ordinary's uh, renamed multi-peptide serum. I really love peptides. I feel like they do a lot for my skin. I feel like they're incredible for smoothing and for anti-aging. And I truly think you need to look no further than The Ordinary. Their options are incredible. Do they pill? Yes, they absolutely do pill. They are not the most cosmetically elegant, but they are so affordable. And these peptide products, some of these high-end brands love to charge a lot for them. I feel like you get the same results from The Ordinary's version. It's just that it's a little less cosmetically elegant. So I reserve this for nighttime use because it does not like makeup. It will make your makeup pill. <laughs> and that's something I've said a lot about The Ordinary over the years. You know, I think that uh, the reason you don't see more of The Ordinary's products in this type of video is because I don't find them to be the most elegant, but I do find them to be effective. And I always think it kind of boils down to whether you wear makeup or not. If you don't wear makeup, you may never notice the pilling issues. You may never even notice it. Anyway, regardless, this is an incredible serum. You do not need to drop $200 to get a good anti-aging serum. The Ordinary truly has you covered. My favorite brightening serum is none other than the Bubble Daydream. This company, Bubble, we're gonna be doing a full uh, try-on or uh, test run with this brand in 2023, but for now I've gotta include Daydream. This is a vitamin C derivative serum. It uses sodium ascorbyl phosphate, which is still my favorite derivative of vitamin C because it does have additional benefits if you are somebody like me who deals with acne. I just felt like for so many years, if I wanted a good sodium ascorbyl phosphate serum, I had to go to Mad Hippie or to Ole Henriksen. And what I didn't like about those is that they're really scented. There's a lot of you know citrus ingredients. Bubble came through with one that does not have those ingredients. And they also added in other brightening ingredients, including niacinamide, including tranexamic acid, licorice root, alpha arbutin. It even has ceramides in it, all in a fragrance-free formula in a beautiful texture. Again, this is one that I genuinely, genuinely prefer to those higher end options. It is incredible. Now, my favorite redness reducing serum, kind of a category of its own, probably won't surprise you again the Peach Slices Redness Relief Azelaic Acid 10% Serum. This one shocked me. I did not expect to find such a nice azelaic acid serum at the drugstore. It does have a little bit of a green tint to it, but don't worry, it doesn't, it doesn't linger. It's a little bit more of a creamy serum and it contains that 10% azelaic acid. Now, like I've said with azelaic acid, it's a little tricky because at certain levels it is only available by prescription, but at 10% you can walk into Ulta and get it. 
We don't have the same body of literature on 10% azelaic acid as we do for 15 and 20%, but what we do have is a lot of anecdotal reports. And again, you can thank brands like The Ordinary. The Ordinary has an, a 10% azelaic acid serum. It is just not super cosmetically elegant. <laughs> It works, it works, just not super cosmetically elegant, whereas this one is. Okay, so next category, let's go ahead and do, let's do some uh, masks. So my favorite exfoliating mask, in general, this video does not have a lot of AHA products because I've talked before about how I kind of had to choose personally with my skin being a little bit more sensitive, I had to choose between Adapalene and AHAs, but there is an exception. And that is the Versed Doctor's Visit Instant Resurfacing Mask. This mask is so gentle. It is not only AHA ingredients, it also does have some enzymes and a little bit of salicylic acid as well. But I think what's going on with this is that Versed in general makes much more gentle products that are for sensitive skin. And so with this mask, they actually use pretty low percentages, but that is perfect for me. And maybe for a lot of other people as well, this was really quite popular earlier this year, and I still think it is one of the best exfoliating masks I've ever tried. Actually, one of the best AHA products I've ever tried. Now, with this texture, what you're gonna do is you grab just a tiny amount of this, you spread a thin layer onto your skin, and you only leave it on for two to three minutes. And I just, I, I think that I initially thought, oh, this probably isn't gonna do this much, but it's perfect for more sensitive skin. And then my favorite hydrating mask, I've decided to go with I Do Care because you can apply the coupon on this brand so it's non-prestige. This is so fun to use and it truly does feel hydrating. Do you see all the sprinkles in it? I don't think I said this in my haul video where I showed uh, Glow Recipe and I Do Care, but they do kind of sit together in my head. I feel like if you like the, the pretty packaging of Glow Recipe, the fruit shapes, the smells, I think you will like I do care. They're very much in, in the same mental box inside of my brain. This brand does use some fragrance in their products. I feel like it's pretty light overall in this one. And again, it's a wash off product, which is where I prefer to use products that do contain fragrance ingredients. I can usually get away with it in that category. But yeah, it's shockingly hydrating and really fun. Can you believe we're almost to the end of this video? So let's cover a couple of oils. This one was really hard for me because I do like oils. There were a lot of contenders here. In the end, I'm gonna go with kind of a more medium weight and a heavy weight oil. And my medium weight oil pick is again Physician's Formula, the 24 karat gold oil. I highly doubt most of you have even heard of this oil and yet it is again so underrated. I'm so mad at Physician's Formula because it, again, it's like they're a brand that just doesn't know when they have something that is incredible and this is an incredible product. It reminds me a lot of Sunday Riley's Juno. It has those fruit oils in it. It's a base of marula oil. Now it does have some vanilla. You can argue that's an antioxidant. You can argue it adds to the scent. It does have some gold also. I mean, this is a drugstore brand. I really, first of all, wish that Physician's Formula would drop the gold concept. It's kind of goofy, if you ask me, but I think it's in here at a really low percentage. I mean, it, 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 you know what I'm saying? And my heavier oil pick is going to be the Good Molecules Pure Cold Pressed Rosehip Seed Oil. So they are actually using a form of rosehip oil here that is different from the more common one. This one truly contains some trace amounts of retinoic acid. That's not just me saying that, it, it really is trace amounts. So it won't replace your retinol products, but it's fascinating that it's in there. All forms of rosehip oil are absolutely beautiful, especially for dry skin types. It's just a gorgeous oil and it, it, it fascinates me that uh, it's really only good molecules that I know of at least that uses this form of rosehip. We have to have sunscreens. What kind of a person would I be if I didn't have favorite sunscreens in this video? I will tell you, I personally much prefer to go with K-Beauty for this category. However, I do have some favorites here. So for mineral sunscreen, I'm gonna go with the Hero Force Shield. I have a whole video on this sunscreen. It is actually a sunscreen that is made for people with acne does have a little bit of a green tint, which is helpful for reducing the appearance of redness. You know, that's a cosmetic effect going on right there. 
It's mineral, so it's still going to be a little bit on the white casty side. But all things considered, I feel like, I, I do feel like it's the best mineral sunscreen at U.S. drugstores. Again, though, like I said earlier in this video, I do have acne prone skin, so that may heavily play into my opinion of that. Now, <laughs> I want to include a chemical sunscreen in this video, and I'm going to do it, but I also have to give a giant disclaimer that I cannot personally use chemical sunscreens. There's nothing wrong with them, it's just that some people have allergies, and sadly, self-included. But I saw all the hype going on with the Black Girl sunscreen, and I just had to get it and talk my sweetie into trying it, and after watching her apply it, I said, well, Okay, the hype is real on this one. So this is, it's black girl sunscreen. It is actually developed by people of color for people of color. And, and as such, you know, anybody can use it and it's not going to leave a white cast behind. It buffs in like a moisturizer, so it almost does look like it will, but that white cast disappears completely. I'm ending this video with a couple favorite lip picks. So lip picks, why did that? Why did that sound so strange? My favorite lip scrub, I'm gonna go ahead and say the Tree Hut Sugar Lips. This is surprisingly good, but as I always say, just keep in mind that if you're really on a very tight budget, this is a very easy product to make. Just get some thick sugar and some kind of oil. But if you're not interested in doing that, this is a $6 lip scrub that works really well, actually. It works really well. The, can you, can you see it on camera? Probably really not. It does have a pretty good amount of grit to it, which is surprising. I feel like sometimes I come across these lip scrubs that don't have any grit, and it's sort of like, you might have missed the point. <laughs> You're a lip scrub, not a lip balm. You know, you know what I'm saying? This one actually does, it does have that grittiness to it. And I did tell you that this product would appear twice in this video, and yes, it is. Aquaphor. Aquaphor works on your lips. It works for slugging. All it is is an ointment, and you can absolutely use that for any area of dryness, including your lips. It has a very protective formula, so it may not be the best for hydrating your lips, but if you just need to protect your lips from the cold, from the wind, Aquaphor. Aquaphor works. And my friends, that's it. Let me know your thoughts in the comment section below. Again, I will have links to all of these products. They will be affiliated if you would like to make a purchase through those. It will help to support this channel. Make sure you stay tuned. I am so excited to continue this series. Again, I'm putting a ton of thought into it. I hope you like this format where we're doing a lot of swatches. You all let me know in the comment section below. But that's it for today's video. If you found it helpful, please make sure to hit like and subscribe. Have a wonderful week and I will see you all next time.